Hey guys, I'm back. In this video, I'll be building an exact replica of the boring company, Not A Flamethrower. For those who don't know, the Not A Flamethrower is a flamethrower that Elon Musk's company, The Boring Company, sold on their website for $500 a unit back in 2018. A total of 20,000 units were made and were sold out within 5 days. 14 year old me didn't have $500 to burn at the time, but 19 year old me does so here I am fulfilling my childhood dream of owning a flamethrower. This project isn't what I usually build on this channel so if you're new here, welcome! Just before we begin, aside from all the parts that are mentioned in this video, the tools I use to build this project include a Dremel rotary tool with a sanding band and a circular cutting disc, a butane torch, a set of 1.5 to 3mm hex keys, crescent wrench, and a universal screwdriver set with a Phillips and flathead screwdriver bits. This might come as a surprise, but the shell of the Boring Company flamethrower is not actually designed in-house, but instead replicated from an airsoft gun. More specifically, the CSI Star XR5 FG1508 Advanced Battle Airsoft Rifle. Unfortunately, this airsoft rifle was pretty difficult to source and the one website that carried it only shipped it to US addresses, so I had to buy this BB gun and ship it to my family's residence in the USA. Shortly after ordering, the US borders locked down and I wasn't able to make the trip for two years. That was until a few months ago, where the opportunity presented itself to make the trip down and I disassembled the airsoft gun, removed the firing mechanism, and brought back a hollow plastic shell. Simply put, the flame throwing mechanism is just a propane torch. Not only is it more convenient to use a pre-made propane torch, it's also a lot safer. This is why it's called the not a flamethrower as opposed to a flamethrower, because in actuality it's just a propane torch. The torch I used can be purchased at Harbor Freight, and what steered me towards this specific torch is its slim design making it convenient to fit inside a cramped gun shell. As I mentioned, I started by removing the firing mechanism from the gun shell. This process was simple thanks to the use of threaded inserts. I'd recommend keeping track of what screw goes where because I made the mistake of throwing every screw into a Ziploc bag which resulted in me scratching my head when I had to put the thing back together. Now, left with an empty shell, the next step was to prepare the propane torch by removing the unnecessary components of the torch, like the handle, feed hose, caps, and stickers. Those removed, you'll need to bend the tubing so it fits inside of the shell. I used a vise to help with this process. It's critical that you're cognizant of the amount of pressure you apply because the metal is soft and will tear if you overextend the bend. I recommend using heat to assist in this process. I heated the bend point using a butane torch and used a crescent wrench as a lever to bend the tube in small increments. As evident in this video, the bend isn't perfect and doesn't need to be perfect because it's concealed in the shell. My bend looks a bit funky, but hey, it works. Moving forward, I attached the circular cutting disc and gradually widened the cutout for the trigger, as the metal trigger of the torch was wider compared to the BB gun's trigger. During this process, I noticed that the cutting disc left a bit of a rough texture where my fingers would rest, so I popped on the circular sanding bit to smoothen out all the jagged edges. After expanding the cutout, I modified the torch trigger by bending it to fit. Although my bending technique may not have resulted in the most aesthetically pleasing shape, I encourage you to explore and find your own approach. I discovered that creating a notch near the bend point increased the malleability of the metal, but also compromised its uniformity, so do experiment. By utilizing JB Water Weld, a specialized epoxy for plumbers, I effectively fastened the torch in the space previously occupied by the muzzle. One notable advantage of this epoxy is its rapid 10 minute curing time, allowing for convenient manipulation and alignment of the putty. To ensure precision, I fastened a makeshift jig using a spare cardboard box and left it undisturbed for a duration of 48 hours, giving me ample time to attain a satisfactory fit.
Next, I mounted the ignition. I made the mistake of cutting the hole too far back so I needed to extend the ignition line. It's not a big problem, but just something to keep in mind when spacing things out. I attached three zip ties to the end of the igniter so it acts as a spacer between the bracket that holds it in place. The bracket that grips the button will slide around if it isn't seated on a lip or held in by washers. Now that we've secured the igniter in place, grab your cutting disc, pop it onto the Dremel, and cut out a triangle to expose a small portion of the igniter. Then, like the trigger, grab the circular sanding bit and smooth out the sides. What I found helpful was using the Boring Company flamethrower, the legitimate one, as a reference to where it should be and how much of the red button you should actually see. And last but not least, I made the propane supply line. I determined an appropriate length, cut the hose at that point, then used the hose clamp to hold the brass fitting down. I applied a lot of force to slot the fins deep into the brass fitting, so don't be surprised if you feel like you're about to snap it. Then, with this new supply line, I wrapped the male end of the brass fitting with three layers of thread tape and used a crescent wrench to tighten the fitting end into the end of the propane torch. Thread tape is a non-negotiable in this instance because the hose is carrying flowing gas and the thread tape will ensure that the gas stays inside of the tube by sealing off gaps between the threads. Thread tape is actually really common and can be found at any hardware store and is most commonly used by plumbers. Just to be safe, I removed the front nozzle and added a few layers of thread tape to ensure a snug fit. And that's it. Assemble the gun back together and you've built your very own flamethrower. I have attached the bill of materials in the description of the video, along with all the links to the parts I used. Just as a disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes only, and I would not recommend building one of these torches unless you're confident in your skills and abilities. So, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't be a stranger and hit the like and subscribe button to see some of the other projects I have coming out. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and bye bye.